My main goal for the day was to get started on installing some loft joists in the cabin. The loft will give us a higher platform to work from once we begin work on the roof structure. But before I tackle the loft joists, I needed to do something with the cabin floor, which has been incomplete for quite some time now. As we move higher on the cabin, it's especially important that I cover up the lower joists. I started by removing the floorboards, which I will stack for now. Later, I'll have them planed and stained. I want to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode and for helping to make what we do here on YouTube possible. One of the main reasons why I love YouTube is that it's a great platform for the exchange of knowledge, which is also why I appreciate the kind of service that Skillshare provides. In a nutshell, Skillshare is an online community for creators with 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. I've currently been enjoying Ryan Booth's course on DIY cinematography and Wild Rabbit Productions course on advanced aerial videography. If you're interested in trying Skillshare out for yourself, I encourage you to click on the link in the description. Especially since Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. In addition to snagging a chance to expand your skill set, signing up for a free trial is another way that you can indirectly support this channel. While the boards await their treatment, I decided it was best to lay some plywood on the floor joists in preparation for the next stage of building.
Now we have a proper base to work from, much safer than having to step between the joists. Some of you may have noticed in last week's episode that my chainsaw was smoking uh, when I was up on top of the cabin fitting a log. And as well, if you listen carefully, uh, when I ran the chainsaw, it sounded like it was full of gravel. And that's because the drive sprocket inside the chainsaw was beginning to fall apart. And I knew that it was, but I wanted to finish fitting the log first before I got down from the cabin. Here's what the sprocket should look like. And here's how shredded mine was. So today I'm giving it a repair. I have to replace the, uh, the clutch drum, I guess you call it. and uh, it's back up and running, good as new. From time to time I get people asking me about my pull and chainsaw and how on earth I get it to run for so long and be in such good shape because sometimes people have the experience with pull ins that they buy it, it works for a little bit but then it doesn't work very well anymore. I think the secret really, which isn't much of a secret at all, to the longevity of these chainsaws is just regular use. And uh, I think that's actually why this pull and chainsaw has lasted me as long as it has is because I'm regularly using it. Now if you don't know, pull-in chainsaws are known as an entry-level saw or a homeowner's saw. This is by no means considered professional and uh, so from time to time people do make fun of me for using a pull-in uh, out here on the cabin and while I'm logging. Uh, they ask me when I'm going to trade in my toy chainsaw for a real chainsaw and uh, uh, I'm not offended by that at all, I think it's actually pretty funny because I do understand that this is an entry level saw and I'm doing basically professional level work with it. But I've made do and I think it was Red Green who said if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this chainsaw has been working for me and so I've never felt the need to upgrade. Although my dream is to get a couple really nice steel chainsaws. Uh, but again, this is working for me so I'm using it for now. I think the reason why people can have such bad luck with entry level chainsaws uh, well, first of all, they are made with cheaper parts, which is why they're cheaper to buy. But as well, I think people who buy entry-level chainsaws don't use them very often. So they, they buy them maybe for one project, they throw them in the shed, and it sits there for two or three years. And uh, they don't do any maintenance on it, they just leave it as is. And it begins to rot, uh, the seals and the gas lines, everything gets gummed up on the inside. And so when they go to use it again in three years, uh, it doesn't work for them obviously and then they get upset and quite possibly they blame the chainsaw but uh, really it's just any chainsaw can't be left sitting for that long anyway that's my not so secret secret of the day uh, the key to longevity in any chainsaw whether it be professional or entry level is just proper use and proper maintenance With my chainsaw back up and running, I was off to cut a small batch of cedars, which I had previously selected.
Some fell easy, while others needed coaxing. I always fell my cabin logs in late spring and early summer, when they are easiest to peel. My good friend Koto stopped by to help me with a little bit of filming and debarking.
Now it was finally time to begin work on the loft joists. My dad joined me later on to help me with some sawmill work. With three of the six joists in place, I figured it was time to call it a day. Once the loft is complete and properly reinforced, it's going to be so much nicer and safer working higher up on the cabin. That's it for now. 
Until next time, my friends.